What's up guys, Cornered here. Today we're going to be continuing off where we left off on the video about routing and remote services. So in the other previous videos, I showed how to basically configure a DHCP server as well as a basic router. Uh, now we're going to combine them together and create something called DHCP relay services. And with what that does is it basically allows you to have a DHCP server on your network, give out an IP address, to another network, uh, a client on another network. And this really helps for redundancy. It helps if, let's say, for example, that DHCP server on the other network goes down. Well, wait a minute. Okay, so I could just have these IP addresses populate and continue to work. So it's actually a really cool backup as far as getting things uh, configured. So I've already done this in tests just to verify that everything's going to work. So What's going to happen right now is I'm going to disable everything that I configured and show you how to configure it again. And this is really important to understand the logic behind this because it's pretty much a, uh, a requirement as far as I'm concerned on how to get this thing running. So the first thing you want to do to get this running is to, first of all, I want to disable this and enable this again because uh, obviously we don't have DHCP still running so I'm going to disable and enable and it shouldn't find the network so as you can see here it's not finding the network uh, and I cannot because I have the routers set up I can ping between DHCP A and XP left we'll just verify that right now so if I go with an IP config 192.168.2.2 if I type in ping 192.168.2.2, it's going to see it, but, oops, sorry, I meant from here. Ping 192.168.2.2. Actually, let's make, actually, that wouldn't see it, but this is going to see DHCPA, and if this one was configured out with a static IP address, it would actually be able to, to see DHCPB, and I'm going to actually, I mean, not DHCPB, it would see DHCPA, so what's... I'm going to configure this to actually 3.100.168.3.1 just to prove to you guys that it's going to see it, but it won't apply an IP address to it. So because I have the router set up and I have .3.1 set up on this and I have routers set up, I can ping between them, but I can't get a static IP address from them. I mean, I can't get a dynamic IP address from DHCPA to give an IP address to XP right. It just won't happen. I can get, I can statically assign an IP address and go ahead, wait for a second. I will actually, let's see how long this is going to take. I will pause this video and come back when it finishes. So let's just pause this. Okay, so now that we have this up, I'll just verify that this is back up here. Yeah, so now that we have this up, as you can see, I can actually ping 192.168.2.2. That's not the problem. I want this DHCP server to provide me a network address in my network. And in order to do that, you have to set up a DHCP relay. Otherwise, it's not going to get the address that I have in the scope, as you can see here. So actually, I'm going to delete the scope for now, and I want to show you exactly what happens. So I'm going to go to router DHCP, and what I have to do with this is I have to keep in mind what exactly do I want to do. So I want DHCP A to provide an IP address to using DHCP's, uh, using the third uh, VMNet 3 as far as the uh, network address. I need to have that information. And in order to do that, I have that already in the local area connection too. So what I actually have to do is I have to right click on IPv4, excuse me, on general, I have to do new routing protocol, and I have to click on DHCP relay agent. Once I'm on DHCP relay agent, I have to configure two things. One, I have to configure the, and the properties, the server IP address I, I want to go to. I'm gonna add that, and I'm gonna hit okay. Make sure that you actually the best way to do this is to hit okay don't close it because it won't save it hit apply and hit okay is the, really the best way to do it and then now what you do is you right click new interface and you do not want local area connection and the reason why you don't want local area connection is because it's not the way it sounds if you you're saying you want the routing protocol to run on vmnet2 
well, you don't want it to run on VMNet 2. You want it to run on VMNet 3. Is That's because your VMNet 3 network is the one being routed to the relay. So you want your local area connection 2, in this case, is VMNet 3. And don't get uh, and don't get that confused. Just understand that you want whatever network uh, you want to have the IP from, you want to click on that. So in this case, it's local area connection 2. And I will clarify this in the comments if anybody has comments on this because I'm sure there's going to be some questions on that logic. But basically understand that wherever you're, you want your relay agent to apply to which to the network that you want it to apply to. In other words, XP write needs to get a IP address, a DHCP relay from DHCP A on VMNet 2, but your local area connection has to be on 2 because it's VMNet 2 to get the IP address. It sounds confusing, but it really isn't if you really just break down the logic. It just took takes a while to understand. So now if I go back to XP write and I go ahead and I do an IP config slash renew. That sh oh, <laughs> and by the way, I deleted the scope. You need to add the scope onto this to be able to get it. So you need a new scope. Hit next, uh, type in scope for VMNet 3. In this case, it's the switch I'm on. And I'm gonna do 192.168.2.3.2, uh, uh, let's say four, to 192.168.3 to 254. So if I hit next, next, and want to configure these options now, you want to set the router's IP uh, for the router to be 192.168.3.1. And now that you have that, it will configure. So you hit next, next, and you want to activate the scope now. And now that the scope is activated right here, you can go to the right, and then we're going to do a ipconfig slash renew. And make sure that scope is activated here. As you can see, if I go into the support and details, it's got 192.168.3.100, which is the IP address it got from the server. Now that's a pretty interesting IP address. I'm gonna release and renew it, um, and we'll see if we get something else. Because I think that's what the IP it had before. Because the range I set it was pretty pretty wide. So if we go into the address pool, we've got 3.4 to 3.254. XP write should get something less than that, but it's caching with a 3.100. So let's see what's going on here. Refresh. And that's because I had it set up that way before. If you really want it to, um, if you really want to delete it, you delete the address pool. Um, you can restart the machine, ipconfig slash release, and actually restart the machine, and you should have the next level. But understand, I set this up prior, and I changed my scope range, so it actually cached my old scope. And the best way to re start your machine is just to do it that way and restart it, release the IP address, let it not get a cached IP address that it had and ask for it again. So this is the best way to get a, uh, if you ever redo your scope, you want to actually release the IP address and restart the computer to get a scope that's in your range if you've changed it. And I know it sounds confusing, but if you really mess around with this stuff for a while, you'll you'll end up getting it. So. If I go again into my IP config, as you can see here, I've got a 192.168.3.4. And if I refresh this, as you can see, it's right there. So it is a little bit complicated. I may or may not do a video explaining more about this, but just understand that if you work with it and try, try to understand the logic of it, you'll get it a little bit better. So let me know in the comments. I know I could probably... I'm going to maybe work on this video and see if I can do a better explanation. But this is just a really a beginner guide to the, doing this. Just understand that you will have to mess with it to kind of understand it and understand some logic behind it too. 
So thank you guys for watching this video. I will definitely be doing more videos and probably one explaining this a little bit better, but this is one just to add if you are interested in this. So definitely uh, give me some feedback and let me know how you like it.